Dear brothers and sisters, in the psalm that we sang again this evening, we said, Lord, you are good and forgiving. And this psalm is a reflection on the goodness and on the mercy of God. For us, it can happen, um, even frequently, that we have great sorrow for our sins, that we realize, Lord, I messed up, I did something really stupid, right, really silly, and it was very sinful and wrong, and I am, I'm truly sorry, right? For us, though, sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes it's not enough just to have true sorrow in our hearts, but it can take some time for the mercy of God really to penetrate deep inside of us and to heal us, to forgive us in confession, but then to actually to heal us and to make us better and to set us free. And for this reason, something like this psalm is very good. And we repeated this refrain many times, and we could do it many times more. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good. You are truly good. And you are ready to forgive and to give healing. Lord, we want you to penetrate our hearts. We don't want our faith to be superficial. We don't want the love and mercy of God in our lives to be superficial. But we want him to penetrate deep so that he can truly remake us, remake our own hearts and make them like unto his. It's good for us many times to repeat, to repeat phrases like that. The Lord is good and forgiving. We know he is, of course he is, but keep saying it over and over again anyway until, until that allows for hearts to be open wide enough for the, the mercy and the healing of the power of God to heal, to heal our hearts. In the gospel today, we read this account of the mustard seed. The seed which uh, the tradition was, in, at least in that part of the world, that this was the smallest of all the seeds. And so a very small seed is planted and grows up and becomes a great tree, even where many birds come and find their rest. In my garden, the smallest of seeds remains just a small seed. It, grow, it probably dies, right? But in, in God's order, in God's work, the smallest of seed becomes a great tree for many to find their rest. Listen to this interpretation of this parable. It says that the man is Jesus Christ and the field is the world. The grain of mustard seed is the preaching of the gospel and the church, which from very small beginnings will spread throughout the whole world. The parable clearly refers to the universal scope and spread of the kingdom of God. The church, which embraces all mankind of every kind and condition, in every latitude and in all ages, is forever developing in spite of obstacles, thanks to God's promise and aid. When we read this parable, we can imagine, right, this small seed not just being a sign of something small becoming something great, the little guy winning and, and, be, and becoming a great hero, but even more than that, right? This is a sign of the gospel, of the gospel of Christ, which began, our Lord gave it and entrusted it to the first, to the first apostles, to the twelve. They were to go then and spread this gospel with the whole world, to plant that seed everywhere they go, along their footpaths, right? and to then allow that seed to grow up and to bear many, many fruits. The apostles did that, and they went to, you could say, all corners of the earth. Even now today, for many of us, if we travel, uh, we travel here, not even that far, or even if you do travel far, we see that everywhere, pretty much everywhere, the gospel of Christ has reached. Pretty much everywhere. If you look hard enough, you will find a Catholic church. And if you were to go to that Catholic church, you would find people are there and they believe the faith and they pray and they, and they look for the sacraments and they are trying to follow Christ faithfully as he is preached in his gospels. It's amazing that the seed of the gospel has been planted and has been planted all over the world and in many places is bearing good fruit. 
and in many places needs to bear more good fruit, right? Uh, Maybe it's not bearing great fruit, but needs to bear more good fruit. For us, that gives us lots of encouragement and lots of hope that comes from, from this parable of the mustard seed. Today, I want to continue our Novena series I'm looking at the history of our building and of, and of the early years of the life of St. Anne's Parish. And I've said a few things over this novena of Father Englert, and today in this homily, I'd just like to share a little bit more specifically about him. You'll remember that he is not the first pastor of St. Anne's. The first was Father Lenhard, and he was the pastor for, I think, about two years, right? He built the first St. Anne's church, he was the pastor, and then he immediately, he, he moved after that. And Father Englert came in, and he was at St. Anne's from 1907 until 1947, for 40 years. And he died out of this parish. This was his parish, really, after 40 years. And he's a towering figure in the, in, in the early years of the life of this parish. He really laid the foundation for this parish. And so I'd just like to share a little bit more with you about this first pastor of St. Anne's. But before I do that, just to point out, right, of course, we could say many things. It'd be great to say many things about all kinds of different people in those first few years. The parish is not the priest. He's the, he's the priest. He's the leader. But, of course, the church isn't just the priest, right? It's, it's, it's the whole thing. It's all the people. It's everyone uh, working and moving together. And what would be awesome is to have all kinds of articles written and recorded about all the many different awesome people in those early years and the things that they did here in this parish. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot written, right? But we do have a little bit about, uh, about Father Englert. And so here's a few things. First, something that made me happy, Father Englert was born and baptized in Mildmay, Ontario. I don't know if you know, Mildmay is right next door, the neighbor to my my home, Walkerton. And so I was very edified to to know that Father Englert is from up there, right? He's he's, he's kind of my neighbor. And, uh, and, and later on, he came down this way. He basically was born and baptized there in Mildmay and then grew up in the Kitchener area. He then went to seminary and later was ordained a priest for our diocese. Uh, As as a still somewhat of a young priest, Monsignor Father Engler was made a Monsignor. He was raised to the level of Monsignor in 1934. And the cause of this was because mainly of his great work in, in Catholic education in the Hamilton area. You remember how we talked about when he first came to St. Anne's Church, within the first year, they had, a, they had a small school built with two classrooms where they could teach the children the faith, where they could form them, where they could find an authentic, a, a true way of passing on authentic Catholic teaching. So important. And not only here, but with Holy Family Chapel, he did amazing things helping out that little community too. And throughout all of Hamilton, the bishop entrusted him in many roles in terms of Catholic education, looking after the church-run Hamilton uh, Catholic kind of quasi-school board, right? And so he did lots of great work. And uh, for mainly for this, but also I'm sure too, right, for his good work here in the parish, he was lifted to the rank of Monsignor. I want to share with you just a little bit from the official document what we have written about his reception of this elevation to a Monsignor. What's what's really, yeah, really awesome is for um, this official church document from the Vatican to name St. Anne's Church, our church. This is what is written. It says, to our beloved son, Joseph W. Englert, pastor. Beloved son, health and apostolic blessing to you. Our venerable brother, the Bishop of Hamilton, at present here with me at the Roman court. The bishop actually went to, went to Rome in order to have this done, and he's visiting with the, write, with the writer of this document. The Bishop of Hamilton, at present here with me at the Roman court, has spoken of, has spoken of you the parish priest of St. Anne's Church in his Episcopal city in the most glowing terms, right? And, and, and it goes on to then describe how he's being given this great honor. 
What's really cool as well is that this letter is written, we have the handwritten letter, this letter is written by, by a cardinal, cardinal with the last name Pacelli, who some of you maybe who are a little bit older, you may remember when Cardinal Pacelli, Eugenio Pacelli, was, was elected pope. He became Pope Pius XII. And so uh, we have a document written and then signed by, the, by one who would go on to become Pope Pius XII. And this is about Father Englert being named a Monsignor. Father Englert uh, became quite ill near the end of his time here. He had some heart conditions over a few month period and he suffered, it sounds like, a few heart attacks during that time and finally died in November of 1947. He was 67 years old at this time, and he was blessed to be able to receive extreme unction, the holy anointing, before he passed, and he died surrounded in the hospital by Bishop Ryan, by a number of priests and a number of sisters. He died, you could say, a holy death, right? Surrounded by many good people who I'm sure were praying for him and supporting him as he passed from this life into the next. Now, just a few other comments on, on, on Monsignor Englert, Father Englert. Um, one is with regards to the parish debt. He incurred significant debt. You remember some of the stories of having to raise money to pay for the church. There was still a huge debt. And over his 40 years, he worked steadily at paying that debt down. And finally, light was at the end of the tunnel. It was becoming evident um, near the end of his time as pastor. But he would never pay off the parish debt during his lifetime. He died 1947, and it wasn't until 1948 that they paid it off. He almost got there, right? Almost saw the church debt be paid off just one year short. The church parish got together at that time in 1948, and they had a great celebration. They describe it uh, in some of the records we have, and there they had kind of this traditional practice of burning the mortgage. Maybe some of you did that yourselves for your homes. For the parish, they had a celebration to burn the church mortgage, and now they were debt-free. The debt had been paid off. And then shortly after that, again, F Father Engler almost made it to each of these things, but not quite. Um, he died in 1947. That was 1948. 1949, they celebrated the 25th anniversary of this church building. And they invited a priest from the seminary, uh, the vice rector, who gave a tribute, a homily, a tribute to Father Engler. And we have that whole, that whole homily. We have it all in, in writing, and it's beautiful to be able to read it. I just want to share with you just a few paragraphs from that tribute to Father Engler. The priest said, Tonight, in this sacred edifice dedicated to the service of God, a home for Jesus Christ in this district, we come to celebrate the silver jubilee of the opening of this church, on that fair May day, the 11th of 1924. I am not imposing on your memories or upon your imagination too much when I ask you to see Monsignor Englert here again tonight, robed in the vestments for Mass, to see his steps ascend the altar. He's reminding the people and he's saying, I don't have to do much because he was here 40 years and everyone knew him. And they could imagine very easily as he spoke about him, him, Father Engler, being here, stepping up to the altar, um, praying the Holy Mass, and so on. And, uh, and, and it's a, it, we, we actually had someone at the 10 a.m. Mass today who says, Father, I remember his funeral. I remember I was here as a little boy for Father Englert's funeral, and I was a little bit haunted by seeing his body, to be honest. That's, that, that, that's what this man said, right? Seeing his body in whatever casket they had, like when, when it was opened. And, uh, but he remembers, he remembers. And I was saying all these words, and I would love to have talked to him more about, yeah, w what did he look like, and how did all of this look? Anyway, in this homily, he says, you remember, and I don't have to push too hard, you remember Father Englert, Monsignor Englert, here again tonight, robed in the vestments for Mass, to see his steps ascend the altar. For he was ordained above all other things to offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass. 
you see his hand raised in benediction, for he was ordained to bless, and he was appointed to bless you. You see him planning and directing, for he was ordained to give his direction to his flock, and the success, the success with which he did that is a monument to his memory. You see him in the pulpit feeding you words of divine knowledge and doctrine, for he was ordained to preach. You see him at the baptismal font and in the confessional. You may have seen him at the sickbed of the dying, administering food for the long journey, the sacrament of extreme unction, for he was ordained to administer the sacraments. Through 40 years, he carried on with supreme fidelity these works of pastoral ministry. He was your priest. He was your pastor, a pastor after the heart of God, a pastor always for the souls of his people that he might sanctify them and present them a glorious triumph on the day of judgment. What a great witness of Father Englert, of his priestly life. And for this parish, right, not only him, but, but the other pastors and priests and even many other people, right, are all a part of St. Anne's Church being a place that can lift people up, that lifts us up, lifts parishioners up, so that they can one day, hopefully, we pray, be worthy of heaven. And then the final story that I want to sh share with you about Father Englert. I thought it was him, but it's actually not from him. It's actually from the time after Father Englert. It was his successor where all of this happened that I'm about to share. And I would still like to argue that he laid the foundation for it, right? That he put those roots in which then allowed for this great good to happen. The successor of Father Englert began a new society in St. Anne's Church. And this society was, was that of nocturnal adoration. It was a practice that every third Saturday of the month, from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m., men of the parish would come to pray in adoration to our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. And th there were about 120 men committed to this practice. What an awesome thing, right? To have 120 men, 120 of anyone, right? But 120 men in this case who were coming to the church for adoration, who were coming to talk to Jesus about serious stuff, to consult him about their lives, their families, their work, their parish, their community, and to work with Christ in prayer to build up this area, this community, to work with Christ in prayer, to build up their own virtue. So that, so that they could be better dads and, 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 and better husbands and better Catholics. This practice of adoration, which began then and was so well attended and loved, was something that I believe was a game changer for this early parish. The graces that they received because of this nocturnal nighttime adoration must have flowed through, right, and done so much good in the life of the parish. We know, right, we know, and many of you practice adoration regularly, that the gift of prayer, of knowing Christ, knowing him through prayer, is something that you can't compare to anything else. It doesn't compare to anything else in this world. We have such a great gift of Christ in the Eucharist, and such a, it's such a pleasure to be able to spend quiet time with him in the church. Dear good Saint Anne, Intercede, we pray, for the soul of Father Englert and for all of the families that gave of themselves to build up this parish. Like the little seed that, that grew into a large tree for birds to come and to rest in, help our parish to continue to grow so as to be a place for many to come to worship the Most Holy Trinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.